Elash, and I'm here in the Hub Pavilion in Davos. Very pleased to be joined by Jasmine Whitbread, a return appearance, CEO of Save the Children International. Tell me, I know that your, one of your issues, big issues, is hunger. So tell me why business leaders in Davos and elsewhere should care about hunger. So looking at it from an economic perspective, leaving aside the moral case, that it's unacceptable to have you know, millions of children losing their lives every year because of not having enough nutritious food to eat. The economic case um, is that because children who actually survive, even though they're malnourished, will often grow up stunted, if they're not getting enough nutrients before their second birthday, they'll be mentally and physically stunted. And studies have shown that those children will on average see a reduction in their earning capacity over their life by 20%. When you add that up and look at the countries, the caseload of countries, developing countries where this is the biggest problem, then you can see that in each of those countries, the, growth, the GDP will drop by as much as 3%. And you add that up to 2030, which is the horizon everyone's looking at for what comes after the Millennium Development Goals, that's 125 billion US dollars lost productivity gains in terms of what could could be gained, but each of these countries could be gaining their share mm -hmm. of that, which is lost because of malnutrition. Now, on the other side, the investment case is, in order to fix that, it's estimated that around 10 billion per annum would be needed to address the malnutrition rates, stop the stunting, stop the children dying, and mm -hmm. stop the stunting. Mm -hmm. So economically, the case is made. And why we're trying to make this case, not just in the world on the ongoing basis in the year ahead, and, and Cameron really emphasised this, but here at Davos, is because you know, that should resonate. That's an economic case, and that should resonate with the, with the leaders here, and, and they should be concerned about this. This is their future workforce, apart from anything else. So I know that you're having a number of meetings with business leaders, so how are you working with business? So partly it's about getting this message across mm -hmm. um, and if, if business could be become stronger advocates on this front and a number of, of companies are, particularly those engaged on the sort of agriculture, food production side of things. Um, but also actually for Save the Children, we have a number of, of relationships across the board where, and some of them have been forged here in Davos in previous years, where companies will offer their core competencies to help us achieve what we need to do around the world for children. So for example, BCG um, have, have got a good presence here at Davos and they have been helping us with their strategy consulting. You know, we're never going to be world class in, in strategy development. They are and, and they'll come in and do that for us pro bono. Um, Egon Zender International. Mm -hmm. Um, they are clearly, you know, world's premier um, human resource expert. They're able to tap into top talent and they do that for us, for all of our top board and chief executive positions for the different Save the Children's around the world. So there's different ways that companies can lend their expertise in a way that helps us achieve our goals for children, but actually has been a business benefits for them as well. In the case of BCG, I met with their global chief, their incoming, um, their new chief exec, and he was explaining how their uh, recruits, their new recruits, you know, they want to get the brightest and the best out of graduate school. One of the attractions for coming to work to BCG is they know that if they do well and they really prove themselves, they'll get a chance to work on the Save the Children account. Which is obviously the hot one. Well, we <laughs> hope so. We try our best, yeah. I want to ask one more question. I was actually speaking to a couple of other people about hunger and the connection between war and hunger. And I wonder if there's anything that you think that business can get involved on that front, or if that's purely a kind of advocacy um, issue. Yeah, I think um, certainly I'd need to know the specifics, but, but definitely there are I guess I'm a number about of... Sudan, potentially worries about in Mali, that kind of area. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the issue there for businesses who are engaged in, in those, presumably it must be a, a company that's in some way engaged, maybe mm -hmm. through their supply chain, or um, is that they need to behave responsibly in those mm -hmm. countries. Um, and that might mean you know, being very careful about if their government is offering them land, where's that land come from? Has that been grabbed from poor people who have not been fairly compensated? Right. Um, through to paying their taxes in the countries that enables the governments then to be able to run decent health and water and sanitation programs, things that also affect nutrition. 
So that's kind of being responsible. But then on the on the positive side, I mean, companies can play a very and are playing a very strong role in terms of job creation, in terms of uh, training farmers, in terms of you know, reducing food waste in, in the supply chain. So there are a number of ways in which businesses should be thinking hard about what their actions are and how, and even in the most fragile of countries. Jasmine, thanks so much for stopping by the Hub Pavilion, and I'm Edie Lush. Thank you.